Hi, it's Katrina! From shockingly accurate medieval maps to stone structures left behind in the Sahara, here are nine mysterious artifacts scientists can't explain. Number 9. Figures on a Roman Vase The Portland vase was first referenced in Rome at the turn of the 17th century after allegedly being discovered in a sarcophagus in the tomb of Emperor Alexander Severus. For centuries, art historians have been stumped about the imagery on the Portland vase, a small glass vessel adorned with seven enigmatic characters carved in white against a blue backdrop. Only one character on the vase has ever been identified, a male figure suspended in mid-flight, holding a bow and a torch, who experts believe is Cupid. Other depictions on the container include a heroic-looking young man and a semi-nude woman holding a slithering serpent. But nobody knows who these individuals or any of the other characters on the vase are. According to the BBC, theories include the possibility that the unknown figures represent mythological weddings or even the real-life union between Cleopatra and Mark Antony. The vase may have held the cremated remains of a high-ranking member of society, or it may have been a gift. But one thing's for sure, it was expensive, and not an everyday item, and its owner was likely incredibly wealthy and important. While scholars may never agree on the meaning of the Portland vase's images, the identity of its original owner, or its intended use, they can certainly appreciate the artifact as one of the 15 or so surviving examples of Imperial Roman cameo glass, a luxury material that was popular during the early Roman Empire and fell out of fashion by 50 or 60 AD. Exactly how the Romans manufactured the Portland vase and others like it is also unknown. Number 8. Warangal Fort Located in the southern Indian state of Telangana, Warangal Fort defies the stereotypical image that comes to most people's minds when they think of a fort. Rather than being a basic, solid, cut-and-dry fortification, the surviving stone structures at this site are more intricate than imposing. Don't get me wrong, the three circular strongholds that once stood at Warangal and which were surrounded by a moat certainly served practical purposes. But the fortification system was likely weak, as invaders overthrew the site's occupants numerous times over the centuries. King Ganapathi of the Kakatiya dynasty built Warangal Fort at the very beginning of the 13th century, and his daughter, Rani Rudrama Devi, oversaw its completion, which was finished in 1261. Based on its eloquent appearance and its apparent failure to protect its inhabitants time and time again, some scholars theorize that Warangal Fort was built more as a show of extravagance than as a defensive base. During the 16th century, the early rulers of the Qutub Shahi dynasty destroyed the fort, and it remains in ruins to this day. Some structures, such as the Grand Shiva Temple that once existed at the site, have disappeared. In fact, some believe that there were as many as 365 Shiva temples at the site once, which have been lost to history, but nobody seems to know for sure. Warangal Fort attracts its fair share of visitors, however, who travel to the site to admire the structure's detailed stone carvings and ornamental arched gateways that survive hundreds of years after their creation, standing as a testament to the Kakatiya dynasty's craftsmanship and architectural skill. And now for number 7, but first I want to say a quick thank you to Charlotte Muller and Keith Miller for supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and let me know what you would like to see in future videos. Number 7. Shockingly Accurate Medieval Maps In the early days of cartography or map making, maps were imprecise at best and flat out inaccurate at worst, to the point of being unrecognizable in many cases. This is why historians are perplexed over the strangely accurate dimensions depicted on a 13th century map of the Mediterranean. Inked onto vellum, the map is so precise that modern ships could effectively navigate with it. Writer Julie Raymeyer explained in a 2018 Discover Magazine article, with this map it's as if some medieval mapmaker flew to the heavens and sketched what he saw, though in reality he could never have traveled higher than a church tower. That's a very good point. Imagine if we were limited of our world view by how high the nearest tower was. The document is known as the First Portolan Chart, a type of nautical chart that was first made in the 13th century and originally depicted the Mediterranean before evolving to include other regions. Its creation marked a milestone in maritime exploration, enabling sailors to reliably plot navigational routes rather than journeying segment by segment. 
Whoever created this first portal in chart left his successors little to go on in terms of his map-making methods. There are no known first-hand descriptions of his work, rough drafts, or sketches, leaving today's experts puzzled as to how the cartographer's creation came to be. John Hessler, a specialist in modern cartography at the Library of Congress, has made some headway in solving this mystery by way of mathematics, which enables him to retrace the mapmaker's steps, so to speak. In his lengthy study of Portland charts, Hessler reasoned that medieval cartographers used a series of measurements, equations, and directions to create a skeleton of sorts to design their map. Were Portland charts flawless? No. As with any mapmakers of the time, the quandary of transferring spherical dimensions to a two-dimensional surface resulted in many imperfections. But the creations were impressive for their time, and while researchers now have an idea how they became so skilled at mapmaking, their exact formula remains elusive. Number 6. Neolithic Stone Mask In late 2018, the Israel Antiquities Authority, or the IAA, announced the discovery of a Neolithic stone mask in the southern Judean desert, sparking widespread fascination as well as an intensive debate regarding the authenticity of such artifacts. The rare mask dates back roughly 9,000 years, a time during the New Stone Age when humans were first acclimating to an agricultural lifestyle. It was found following an inquiry with the IAA's Antiquities Theft Prevention Unit, and researchers later established the Panay Hever region of Israel as the probable site for its original discovery. Like other similar masks that have been unearthed, the most recently discovered one is made from soft carved limestone with eye openings, a defined mouth, and holes around its edges, which prompted experts to speculate that it was once tied to an object or a person's face. This and other masks mark an important period when humans were first starting to settle into organized communities and were therefore starting to prioritize social and religious rituals and norms. Once you get larger populations and more people living in one place, you need some social control, Alan Simmons, professor emeritus of anthropology at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, told National Geographic. That's why you start to see more formalized ritual behavior. But exactly what were the masks used for? Experts are admittedly unsure, though they speculate that the artifacts may have played a role in ancestor worship. Moreover, some researchers even call into question the mask's authenticity, believing that at least some of them are forgeries. Number 5. Haunted African Artifacts in 2014, a 320-piece collection of African cultural artifacts was rediscovered in storage, belonging to the Art Department of Missouri Southern State University. The items, all tribal pieces originating from African countries including Sierra Leone, the Congo, Ghana, and Nigeria, included tools, woven fabrics, ceremonial masks, carved figures of various sizes, a small grave marker, iron bars that were used as currency, and more. Former associate professor of art Val Christensen had accumulated the forgotten artifacts as part of a sabbatical research project. Experts were called in to analyze and catalog the collection, and as they went about their work, they stored the artifacts in climate-controlled environments to ensure optimal preservation. Things took a bizarre turn days later when a staff member overheard shrieking, banging, and other unexplainable noises coming from the room where the artifacts were being stored. The employee rushed into the storage room and discovered a shattered mask on the floor. A few days later, the room flooded with several inches of water, and maintenance workers were unable to determine a cause for the flooding. Thankfully, the artifacts were on shelves and were relocated to a different room, which subsequently flooded. Dr. Jacqueline Lewis Harris, a University of Missouri-St. Louis art historian, offered some theories as to why these strange events were occurring, including the possibility that four particular artifacts were highly charged with negative energy, perhaps because they had originated from warring tribes or were crafted with the intent of exacting revenge. She speculated that these artifacts were craving water, hence the repeated flooding of the rooms they were stored in, and recommended storing them separately and performing a sage-burning ceremony to purify them. The ritual was scheduled, and there has been no word ever since regarding how effective it was. But sometimes, no news is good news. Number 4. The Sea Peoples a cryptic society of maritime warriors known as the Sea Peoples laid siege to the Mediterranean for almost a century during the second millennium BC, according to ancient inscriptions and accounts, which even hint at the possibility that this civilization crumbled the Hittite Empire. Yet nobody knows exactly who the Sea Peoples were, and they know little to nothing about their culture or nationality. 
Ancient civilizations who warred with the Sea Peoples, namely the Egyptians, left behind the bulk of what limited information is available about this enigmatic society. Pharaoh Ramses III evidently fought numerous battles against the Sea Peoples, for example, and an inscription within his tomb details the Sea Peoples' movements as they wreaked havoc upon the eastern Mediterranean. The Sea Peoples were a federation of tribes going by the names Sherdan, Peleset, Danyen, Shekelesh, and more. While some scholars have traced these tribes' origins to Sicily, the Aegean Sea, or Turkey's Anatolia region, their beginnings are anything but concrete knowledge. Even more strangely, while prevailing theories indicate that the Sea Peoples were displaced from their homeland by famine or natural disasters, scholars are unsure why they were so intent on destroying societies within the Mediterranean. As fierce as the Sea Peoples were, their power came to a screeching halt after the 1175 BC Battle of the Delta, when Ramses III corralled his forces and defeated the invaders, who subsequently made an abrupt departure from the historical record. Number 3. Ghost Lineage While examining the genomes of living humans in West Africa with Neanderthals and Denisovans, two Homo sapiens species or subspecies that contributed to our collective ancestry, UCLA researchers detected genetic variations that they didn't recognize. These discrepancies did not align with the genetic code of modern humans or our ancient relatives, the Denisovans and the Neanderthals. The variation is present among several groups of people, including the Yoruba of Nigeria and the Mende of Sierra Leone, in concentrations between 2 and 19 percent. Researchers believe that this unnamed ghost lineage split from hominid ancestors before humans diverged from the lineage that came to encompass the Denisovans and Neanderthals. This split occurred roughly 800,000 years ago, and the ghost lineage stemmed off on its own before this. Around 50,000 years ago, the ghost lineage reconnected with Homo sapiens or modern humans, leading researchers to conclude that at the very same time we were interbreeding with the Denisovans and Neanderthals, some people were also procreating with members of the ghost lineage. More studies are being carried out in hopes of identifying this cryptic ancestor. Number 2. Secret Chamber while performing a standard excavation of the Province House in downtown Halifax, Nova Scotia in early 2019 in anticipation of remodeling, archaeologists discovered an underground stone vault, roughly the size of a living room, packed chock full of artifacts. Neither the archaeologists nor the construction workers on site expected to stumble upon the secret chamber, which is not mentioned in any records, maps, or blueprints of the site. They encountered the surprise vault after a backhoe hit and began chipping away at what everyone initially thought was bedrock. To their surprise, the purported bedrock crumbled easily, revealing the subterranean space. What we discovered was an open, dry stone-laid chamber with a semi-circular vaulted-type roof, principal archaeologist April McIntyre told CBC News. McIntyre submitted a report about the strange vault to the Canadian government, describing it as a subterranean stone-walled feature measuring approximately 6 meters north-south by 4 meters east-west, and approximately 3 meters high to the top of the silt that has collected on the floor. Crews were not permitted to enter the chamber for safety reasons, meaning McIntyre's summary is based on estimated dimensions. Using remote cameras, they explored further, ultimately uncovering 1,534 artifacts, primarily glass and pottery. But any concrete knowledge of the room's origins and use escapes experts for now. We're not entirely certain as to what it is, but it's similar in construction to some powder magazines that were built around that period, McIntyre said, referencing artifacts that date back to the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Whether or not researchers will further study the objects remains to be seen, as most of the artifacts were slated for storage. Number 1. Sahara Stone Structures In early 2019, in the little explored region of the western Sahara Desert, archaeologists discovered hundreds of ancient stone structures of various shapes and sizes. Researchers are unsure who built them, when, or why. Some of the structures are crescent-shaped, while others are circular. Meanwhile, some form a straight line, while others are rectangular. Several of the constructions are made from rocks piled into a heap. Many use a combination of the aforementioned shapes, including a 2,066-foot-long complex consisting of straight lines, circles, rock piles, and a platform. This area remains under study due primarily to conflict between the two controlling regions, Morocco and the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, which lasted until 1991. Consequently, experts are just touching the surface when it comes to understanding the region's past. 
While they are admittedly unsure of what many, if not most, of the structures were used for and who built them, they suspect that a sizable portion of them mark graves dating back roughly 1,500 years. Additionally, evidence suggests that the arid Western Sahara was once wetter and more tropical, with more animal and plant life than it is home to today. Unfortunately, getting to the bottom of the structure's uses and origins will likely be a lengthy process due to intermittent security problems in the region that often put excavations on hold. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to learn about more mysterious artifacts that scientists can't explain, let me know in the comments below. While you're at it, be sure to subscribe! See you next time! Bye!